In this week's episode of Stone Inter, we'll be discussing the win against Udinese. We'll be previewing the match against Kievo, Inter Legends, this week's Moji, Moratti and Frog, and much, much more. Everything here on Studio Inter, only on sempreinter.com. Ecco Perisic, uno contro uno, gioco di gambe, guadagna il fondo, il cross, i cardi, e gol, 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 Maurito il Mamba! Sono i blocchi nell'area di rigore, arriva la palla, la prende Messino! La prende Messino! Che segna solo contro le Romane e segna il gol del 3 Per una vittoria eccezionale! Eccezionale! Benvenuti, bentornati to another edition of Studio Inter. I'm your host, Nima Tavalle Ruzzari, wishing you uh, a somewhat... I'm somewhat conflicted about how I feel this week. It's nice to win. It's really important to win. But as for reasons that we'll get into, it is um, it is anything but calm in Casa Inter. But uh, I'm, I've brought three three friends, uh, three regulars to discuss the situation. Uh, uh, and uh, starting with uh, SempreInter.com's own uh, Inter Legends writer, Mr. Curdy Smith. How are you, Curdy? Hey, Nima. How you doing? Uh, Alex, Will, how are we doing today? We're good. Um, I know, as as you alluded to there, uh, we're also joined by the host of the Alex Dono Show, Mr. Alex Dono. Welcome. It's great to be back, and it's great to be back after a victory in December. Exactly, exactly. And we're also joined by uh, uh, our very own uh, Will Beckman, who works in a ton of places now, and above all, is, a, is quite the expert on female football in England. Welcome, Mr. Will Beckman. No, i regali. <laughs> God. That is just oh god, yeah no. Good no. evening. No 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 no. Why 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 did you do that? <laughs> I've been trying to unsee that for two days. Um, you thought interbells was the worst that we it could get. Oh my god! Oh god! Oh <laughs> you know just how we put it out after the Udinese game this year. We've learned our lesson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If we're going to make complete tosses out of ourselves, then we'll yeah. do that after we win. Yeah. But, we, but we'll get back to uh, making ourselves look like absolute tossers because we have others who have taken that, taken that, along, uh, taken that job for us uh, on national TV in Italy. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to Wanda Gate and her comments on Italian TV uh, where she threw the entire club's, club hierarchy under the bus, uh, creating a, sh- a, a poo storm uh that um that is uh, that is that is going to take quite a bit to clean up but before we get to that let's go to the Udinese game um because the Udinese game it, it felt like it was a continuation for me at least it felt like it was a continuation of the PSV game i think inter started the game really well they were in control throughout the game they were in control but they but inter seemed a bit frantic and that especially in the beginning and a little bit panicked um and started the game as if it was a 90th minute and they were a goal down and that kind of that nervousness i think created some sort of um ap- almost like uh, created some sort of panic at inter's ranks causing inter to uh, to not be able to score um do you agree with that assessment alex yeah of course i, I agree with it it was evident that the the finishing or lack thereof in the final third it was very frustrating watching that match i i could see nerves and fear from Inter in that game. Obviously, the possession control was there. The quality over Udinese was in Inter's favor, very evident for 90 minutes, but you'd see a lot of guys freeze up when they got into the final third. I do want to add one positive, though, one serious positive coming out of that game. It wasn't all bad. I was thrilled with the link-up play on the right between Versalco and Politano. I mean, to me, uh, th- that, that almost almost made me feel good about the performance, just uh, the chemistry that those two are developing, the runs that they're making, and the way that they complement one another. uh, That is one bright positive I can take away, and hopefully Versalco can stay healthy uh, for for most of the remainder of the season, because I I think the partnership between the two of them on the right side is, you know, fullback and winger, I think can really be something special, and most of the most of the dangerous attacks were coming from that side, and Versalco's crosses were on point the entire night. The problem was, as you were alluding to, Nima, with you know, the way that Inter was not executing, every time Versalco would put a, a perfect peach of a cross into the box, there was no one in the box to be on the receiving end for it. So th- there was a lot of bad, there was some good, and of course maybe the best thing to come out of that match was the 
Panenka penalty for Mikardi. That was a lot of fun. So it wasn't all terrible, but it certainly wasn't the type of performance that instills a lot of confidence. I agree with you. I don't think it was a, pro- a terrible performance. I think, I mean, Inter were in control, like you say. But however, there was this this touch of panic to how they behaved. Um, uh, and, 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 and that is what I found a little bit, you know, that's what we spoke about last week, that maybe, you know, this, this game is so important because if Inter can win... Uh, if they lose, you know, they, 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 they'll be, you know, they'll be entering the vicinity of Crisisville. Uh, now they managed to win, um, and that was that was great. Uh, but you you did touch on uh, the Versalco and Politano thing, and that's something that I wanted to to ask you a little bit about, Critty. Um I mean, obviously that was Versalco's best game uh, since joining Inter, and his crosses, you know, he, you know, we would criticize him for his crosses not being accurate. Uh, but him and Politano, they really, really linked up really well. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. Uh, it was his best performance in a uh, black and blue shirt so far. And, uh, you know, it's a lot about experimenting uh, with the right squad and the right right, the right the uh, players so that you see what you actually have with these. It's, you know, Spalletti hasn't had a lot of these players at his disposal that were signed in the summer for long periods of time, you know. Obviously, Nainggolan's missed a lot of time. Versalco's missed a lot of time. Uh, Politano's been one of the consistents that's been there. Uh, Latauro's been uh, healthy, but uh, doesn't always get to see the pitch. Uh, and, and, of course, you know, there's uh, De Vrij, who's, who's played a, a bulk of time, too. Um, but with these, um, with these wingers and these uh, fullbacks and stuff like that that have to uh, uh, sort of link up together and help in the, uh, in the buildup, uh, there's been, uh, you know, a lot of inconsistency as far as the lineups go and player personnel. So it was a very... Very refreshing to see uh, what Alex and yourself, Nima, have alluded to in that aspect, and it's something to build off of. We was, you know, we can only uh, hope to see that, you know, become more of a consistent thing. Um, but going back to what you originally said, real quick, want to touch on this because we talked about it last week. You know, Inter's uh, head case problems uh, as far as the month of December and January go. You know, I wanted to say I'm going to make an analogy sort of like a uh, relationship. It's like if you if you're with a girl, uh, you know, uh, three different girls and you always reach the nine month mark and they dump you. Uh, then, of course, <laughs> if you get the fourth girlfriend, then, of course, you, you start getting nervous around the seven and eighth month mark. You know, I'm, 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 you know, everything's been good after the honeymoon phase. And then, you know, boom. And, and Inter always starts off if you go back to Mancini. Uh, 15, 16, fantastic uh, first half of the season, uh, right before Christmas in first place, uh, right in place for the Scudetto. Uh, had no business being there considering the uh, the roster we had at the time, but, you know, uh, still we overplaying uh, what we had. And I think that that, you know, this is four years in a row uh, that Inter have had to face these ghosts. And I think that it weighs on them. If you look at the performance, you know, 22 to seven shots, four on on target, including uh, Icardi's penalty is one of those four. Uh, 67, 65% possession, typical intermatch. But as, as Alex said, very, very frustrating in the final third. Uh, just couldn't, uh, as, as a whole unit, uh, it, it's one of those typical games that you saw from Inter last uh, December, last January. But they won, and that's the most important thing, three points. And that has to give you some confidence. And, and, and you know, instead of, you know, letting uh, another week go by where Milan closes the gap a little bit more, now they're only one point behind, now you're still ahead by three. Uh, the world is not collapsing and caving in on you. So that's something to be said as a positive. I just wanted to say that. But um, no more getting dumped, okay, guys? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's 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 not get dumped anymore. Uh, no, I, there's one thing I wanted to talk to you all about because we've started start a little bit uh, talking about it, and this is how you know we start, spoke a little bit a little little bit about it last week about can we say that Icardi's ha, Icardi has evolved as a player, and I think that we can say that there is there is there's this this is starting to happen now because for the fourth game in a row irrespective of who we're playing he's he's playing much more he's much more active he's much more of a target man and he's much more active and involved in the link up play it's clear it's very clear that Spalletti has convinced him to give this a go and he's following through what do we think about that uh, will what are your thoughts personally i think maybe we lose a little bit by him doing that i was never one of the people who criticized him for just scoring tap ins uh, but, but what do you think uh, I mean, I'm not really bothered either because what he does is so brilliant um, that I think, it, but having said that, I think it's it's right that people insist on that because I think with football the way it is today, um, specialists are 
kind of become extinct. You know, the fullbacks don't have to attack. Attackers now have to defend. Midfielders now have to do both. Um, so you, you kind of have to be, you have to be an all-rounder. The more of an all-rounder you are, the more of a chance you've got of making it um, at the top. So I don't, I don't think it's a problem that people keep asking. I think it can only be a good thing because I don't think it will affect his ability to, to finish chances. Um, but I agree that it's happening. I have to be honest, I didn't think it would. You know, he, was, he gave an interview to uh, Corriere de la Sport the week before the Juventus match. And he basically, he, he sort of insinuated that he didn't care about people criticising him for not taking part in the build-up play enough. He said, you know, I help the team by scoring goals. That's it. The, 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 the forward should play, the forward should score goals, the defender should defend. That's my view of football. So I took that to mean that Icardi was going to just become, just going to remain this fantastic uh, offen- attacking terminal and be not, be not much else. But, you know, football's weird. It can, uh, it can prove you wrong. And I agree. He's been, uh, he's been much better. His performance against PSV was astonishing. It's a shame that that wasn't rewarded because he would certainly deserve to go through, if not any of his teammates. So, yeah, I think... Um, I mean, this is all relevant to what we're going to discuss in a few minutes. It just, it indeed, just increases indeed. the importance of <laughs> signing him out. <laughs> well, um, yeah, uh, Alex, I mean, do you, do you think that this is, uh, I mean, because his, his, his strength is he's a poacher. He scores goals for fun. Um, do you think that, you know, this development, I mean, it, it's a bit of a gamble, but at the same time, I can definitely understand. I think it's it's the right way to go. And, and Spalletti, who was provedly, provenly, I mean, he's taken Brozovic and João Mario and all these other players and lifted them. I think Spalletti really is the right man to be in charge of this 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 um, this revolution or not or evolution more like um, more more correctly. Um, do you think do you think it's it's worth the risk or do you would you prefer him to kind of just be the the player he was? Well, I, I don't have much to add to what Will said except. I think on a team like Inter, where we've seen in recent years, uh, Icardi doesn't always get great service, right? So he's not always, when he is just the fox in the box, is not always getting set up properly by teammates, unless Perisic is going through runs of great form, which he certainly isn't at at the moment. (laughs) And also, this time of year, when when Inter tends to go through their, their winters of discontent, uh, you'll see at times when Icardi is not getting that service and it's almost like having 10 men on the pitch because he's not linking up with his teammates. So if nothing else, having him dropping back and becoming more involved, at least you're giving a, a very talented, gifted player a chance to actually impact the match in a way that he can't impact the match if he's standing in the box with all of his skills. But if no one can get him service... You go through tough roads like this, and it's like having 10 men on the pitch. So I think from that aspect, I, I think it is it, it is and can be a positive. Mm. Critty, your thoughts quickly? Honestly, I just I want Mauro Riccardi to do what makes him happy. If he thinks, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't mean that in the sense that, like, we, the club should, should give in to him as far as, uh, you know, if they ask him to do something, he can just rebel and say, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I, I think that I think Spalletti kind of gives him a free hand. I think that it's like, you know, hey, Mauro, you know, if you want to uh, involve yourself in this in this way, then do I, it's, it also comes down to the opponent and how the how the, the style of play is in that particular match. I mean, it, every every it's it's amazing how every football match has its own different face and its own different design and makeup because of, you know, uh varying styles of play or the opponent you're facing, whether they sit back or they come forward, it depends on, you know, their strengths. And if they have a, uh, you know, back line of a five or four or three, uh, you know, Icardi, if he's multidimensional, it's only going to help enter the long run, as opposed to just being, as you said, a fox in the box or a poacher. Uh, I just, he strikes me as the kind of guy that Mauro is going to do what he wants to do. I don't, he just, he, I think the abilities there, I would prefer him to um, to do what helps the team obviously the most in that particular uh, situation, but uh, you know I have never I've I've I can say for one that I've never really been this you know not content with what he's given the club over his time here. I think he's uh, one of the most brilliant number nines in the world and has been for for quite a few years now. So I'm fine with him remaining a poacher. It's like Alex said, as long as he can get the service, it, it severely hampers him if he's having to score these last second goals on, on uh, dead ball situations, you know, corner kicks, whatever have you set pieces. 
uh, you know, scoring a header here and there. And, and that's how, you know, nothing from open play um, that that's that's severely uh, hampering what, what he's capable of. But, you know, that's down to a lot of, his, you know, the performances of his teammates. So uh, I think him as an individual, I think he's brilliant. I say keep on doing what you're doing. I mean, the way I look at it is, it's, I mean, as I said, for me, Spalletti is the best man-man coach I think we've had since Mourinho um, uh, almost a decade ago. Uh, and, and in some ways, I would say, in my opinion, I think that he's even better than Mourinho in terms of developing talent. I mean, who would have honestly thought in December 2017 that Mar- Marcelo Brozovic was going to have that kind of the, the growth and development he had under Spalletti? Who, I mean, João Mario, same thing there. Uh, Danilo D'Ambrosio has raised his level. Everyone has raised their level. So it's clear that Spalletti has a very, and this is nothing, you know, this isn't the first time Spalletti does this. I mean, Emerson Palmieri at Roma looked world class under Spalletti. Um, you know, so it, it's, it, he does this. He has this ability to get players to raise their level and develop players. Um, and he's a football educator, if you will. And therefore, I, I don't have a problem with it. I know there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. And I think that's what we saw against Udinese, that he's kind of a little bit in rough around the edges in this new role. But I think that if, and I, because I think there's a high, there is always risk involved. But I think the risk here is is lower compared to the gain, uh, if, you, if you were to make that kind of a ratio. Because I think that he is, he has the intelligence. He is good enough, I think, to be able to develop his game and master that new role and make that role his. And if he does that, um, I think Inter stand to gain a lot from that. And I think Spalletti is, is the right person to oversee that evolution. Um, so I, I think, you know, as long as, as long as Spalletti and him have got a good working relationship, I say go with it. Right. Um, before we uh, move on to uh, the next segment, uh, we uh, the Inter, the Sempre Inter uh, readers voted Mauro Icardi as the man of the match, twenty nine percent. In second place, we had Simeo Versalco with twenty two and a half percent, and in third place, we had João Mario uh, with forty five percent. So uh, it's pretty much, I think that's a very that's a fair a fair reflection of how the game was as a whole. Right. Um, Next up, it is the nightmare before Christmas. We travel to Mordor uh, in a more literal sense, <laughs> as we oh, are going, Nima. as we are going to the most depressing uh, stadium <laughs> ever to be built. Um, it's called. It's it's in a beautiful city though, uh, in Verona, against the flying donkeys of Kievo, um, who have go- who I mean. If Inter season has been a little bit of a roller coaster, I don't even know what to call what they've gone through. But they seem to have got some some stability uh, under Mimo De Carlo. Will, uh, what are you? What, what are your thoughts going into this horrible ordeal on Saturday? It's a bit of a loaded question. I think. <laughs> what are you whatever trying you, to suggest? What, whatever do you mean? <laughs> uh, I think you're. Sw- I think you're just. Just horrified by your, you're still tired, sort of, uh, still, still, still pain from your experience there a few years ago. But yes, <laughs> um, yeah, I predict pain. Um, it's just look, you look at the table and you think, well, it's fine. We'll just sort of turn up, rotate the squad, everything will be fine. Go home, have a nice Christmas. No, Kevo don't, Kevo don't do nice Christmases. Um, this is going to be, this is going to be a painful match. Um, they have had four league matches since Di Carlo took over. They've all been draws. One of them was away to Napoli. One of them was at home to Lazio. Um, they have a very tight defence. We will not have uh, Vecino again. You know, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. They're going to annoy the hell out of us. It'll be cold. It'll probably be raining. And I'll probably be grumpy um, on Saturday evening. But... You know, that's that's the sort of that's the fans' view. That's the pessimistic view. The the objective view is that we should win the game. I I would hope that we will play better than we did against Udinese, um, because that kind of win and performance is good, provided it doesn't become the norm. So I would like to see an improvement. Um, but I I think look, oh, it's, it's it's also this sort of pre-Christmas, the Christmas dinner, the the the, the videos coming out on. On social media, wonder speaking, this, 
the Icardi stuff. It just like feels like there's a there's a nasty day brewing. Like it's just it just got that uneasy feeling. I don't I don't like this game. No, I don't. Uh, it's exactly it. That's exactly what what. what... Um, I couldn't agree with you more, um, and when we'll get more close, we'll, we'll get to that all in a, in a minute. But uh, last season, we Borja Valero scored his two only goals so far since signing for Inter in this game. Or I, I know it wasn't Kievo; it was Hellas. He was at the same stadium. Yeah, uh, Kievo was the the one at the end of the season. Where... That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, Icardi and, and Perisic, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right. and then Kievo scored, and then they almost scored another one in the last minute, and we were at half yeah. attack. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. It was the penalty. Yeah, it was the penalty. Or no, yeah, it was that. It was that goal that was VAR. Or it was. It was. It was, yeah. it, was ru- it was ruled out. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, no. Uh, no. So um, this is this is a game I don't particularly uh, t- particularly like. Uh, but but also because Kievo, when of all the the teams to play away against, Kievo is the team that can they can really. They can really bore the. They can bore you to depression when they want to. When they want to play tight, when they want to close everything down, they can really close it down to the point where where you want, where you're you know where you're playing, you're frustrated, and when you're watching, you want to slash your wrists. And this is kind of what I'm expect, expecting from them to do as well. Um, and and that well, that's why you know it's so important that an Inter that has had trouble finishing has to has to be able to. You know, take take the chances they're given because I don't think there'll be that many chances offered. Uh, Alex, what are your thoughts? Having this game right before Christmas, it's it's terrible. It's a downer. That stadium is where dreams go to die. Christmas <laughs> might be canceled after this one. You know, I, 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 Will made a great point that even though Kievo has not won a match all season, they have been drawing everybody recently since De Carlo took over. You know, they even. They even drew away at Napoli. This is, I, I, I don't fear defeat, knock on wood, as, as much as I fear a just a very suffocating nil-nil draw. I, I, yeah. I, I think for ta- talking about the way, Nima, you described uh, Kievo's defense, I think it's of the utmost importance to get a goal relatively early within the first 20 minutes or so to try and unlock it a little bit because... I, I would honestly fear that if you even enter the second half scoreless, I really start to sit back and, and almost expect a nil-nil draw. Um, I have my fingers crossed to, to try and come away with three points, but I, I think I'm fearing a draw in this match. Who did the calendar? Like Last year before Christmas, we had Sassuolo, and this year we have Kiev away. Like, they're the two games that would ruin my Christmas dinner Like right <laughs> before Right before the 25th. It's not Sounds fair. like the work of uh, Daniele Orsato. He made the calendar. <laughs> nice. Love Tito. He does the calendar, doesn't he? Yeah. He's got his fingers in the pot. If, if, we, if, we, if we don't have to play Lazio just before Christmas, we have to play them. Yeah, Lotito is everywhere, isn't he? It's funny yeah, how yeah. they made a, they, didn't they make like a funny meme how he is everywhere, <laughs> like basically Lotito yeah. showing up in, in in every yeah, in every every occasion. Um, Critty, uh, do you? I mean, now that we've been miserable and gloomy, uh, will you take the mo role and be Mister Positivity, or will you just add to the doom and gloom? Uh, well, actually. Um... I hate this match um, <laughs> I, 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 for all the reasons. And by the way, I'm going to have to go visit this stadium. You all have built it up so much as this awesome place to, 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 to go. So I, it's on, it's, it's going to be on my must-see list now. I'm going to have to go to Verona and, and, and The go city visit is beautiful. Place. The city is beautiful. But the, the area around that place, I mean, it is. It, it, it's basically like, you, you know, when you've been to a couple of places in Italy and stadiums and you've got this, because every place has got a special charm, and then you go to that place, <laughs> and it's like... There's well, no charm. There is no charm. It's basically where, exactly as Alex said, where, where dreams and hope goes to die. Like, it's, it's, it's like an old strip bar. It's like the whole place just reeks of... Crack them, you know. <laughs> well, now I've got to go. Now I've got to go. I mean, oh. You're just building my case, Nima. I've got to go see this damn uh, atro- uh, this, this this atrocity of a, of a place. But uh, no, um, if if you guys pay attention, what you do, um, you realize uh, the Serie A opener was Juventus against Cable, and Cable came from behind in that match to take the lead. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. They all, <laughs> this yeah, is a horrible they, game. <laughs> they, 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 and that, that was at their stadium as well. So that was Juve struggling uh, to, to put Kievo away. Uh, did so in the very dying minutes of that match. And they have played up to the competition recently, as you alluded to, four draws in a row. And ever since that managerial change, it has lit a fire under their asses. That has has I, I think it's honestly inspired them to, if nothing else, to ruin everyone's Christmas. Uh, you know, it's 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 um it's it's the resurgence of the flying donkeys, and no better team to do this to right before Christmas than of course Inter. Um, you know, that's that's that kind of goes par for the course, but it's just got all the as I can't really add much more to it as far as the superstition goes than than uh, Will and Alex have already added to it. Yourself, Nima, it is just. It has all the makings of a nil-nil or 1-1 draw where Inter dominate possession, have three times as many shots, three times as many shots on goal, probably have a penalty and miss it. Um, just everything <laughs> that can or could go wrong could go wrong in this match. I, 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 if, you had, if you'd said Juve right now you know, at the Allianz, I'd say, yeah, we got a better shot of winning that. Absolutely. It's just, mm. it, 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 the, the, it seems like we play down to the competition in these matches and Kievo recently have played up and it just it just has all the smellings of, of a bad piece of garbage. See, I mean, Mo, to be fair to, to be fair to Kievo, what team wouldn't be inspired by Giampiero Ventura walking out of their dressing room and into the sunset? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. See, they, see, they, drew with, they drew with Roma as well, by the way, just to complete the set. They were 2-0 down at the Olympico. The by the way, so, so, so he knew what he was doing when he left. See, he, he was helping them out all along. We, we just got it <laughs> that all was the plan. He thought he was, That was the plan. He was that, an evil wow, what a, what a plan that was. Depress <laughs> them and then relieve them of himself. <laughs> Think of the last day of the season when they stay up, he'll just be presented like an emperor at the Bentigori. See, see, this is why Mo should always be here when we record. This. <laughs> like, he's the only one who shines a little bit of. Yeah. Like, see this Mo, you have to be on. Otherwise, it just turns into like, like a like a really horrible, ep- like some depressing depression podcast. Ventura like, was the perfect manager for that stadium, wasn't he? <laughs> like just re- dull, grim, quite sad, sucking the life out of anything that comes into his path. <laughs> Coach, uh, demented. I can't believe it didn't work. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, well, I mean, OK, so let, let's quickly just uh, uh, starting with you, Critty, uh, goal scorers and uh, if there are any and uh, the results predicted. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with a with a nasty, dirty 2-2. And I think uh, Icardi gets a, a, a penalty and the other goal scorer is going to be, of course, a set piece. And I'm going to go with my man, uh, Stefan de Vrij, who uh, heads it in nicely. And uh, gives Inter a moment of um, hope of, of, of a nice 2-1 win. And in the dying moments, Kivo, uh, probably 89th minute, actually, to be exact, will score an equalizer and just basically dump all over our three points. Birsa. <laughs> Birsa <laughs> will score the equalizer. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. No, I'm going to go with the nil-nil. It's going to be it's gonna be painful. It's going to be horrible. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get people, because this is just before Christmas, so everyone is free. Everyone has got off of work. Everyone is going to have something to drink. So Twitter is going to go crazy. People are going to lose their minds. Uh, accounts are going to get uh, suspended. I'm going to say nil-nil-nil borrow draw. Uh, Alex? Yeah, I'll, I'll continue to be the ray of sunshine. I'm with you. <laughs> I, I think nil-nil draw, no goal scorers. Maybe you'll hit one goal post, but nothing will get past the keeper. Uh, I'm going to go nil-nil. Mm. Will? <sighs> the game hasn't started yet. <laughs> I feel like it already has. <laughs> this entire week is going to be so frustrating. Oh, my God. Um, well, I... I mean, I'm going to complete a hat-trick of nil-nils then. I actually think, by the way, I think 2-2 would be a lot more annoying than nil-nil. That means yeah, if, we, yes. if, we, if we do get two past them and still don't win, then that's even worse. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, nil-nil. I don't know. Like, just, get, yeah. just get it over with. Get, out, get, get it out of uh, my sight and we'll move on to like the a, Napoli it's, game. It's like a blunt band-aid. Just, just pull it. Right. Uh, let's uh, walk down uh, memory lane again as we turn back through the Inter's glorious history, uh, talking about someone, some player or some coach worthy of Inter legends. And this, as always, is presented by Mr. Critty Smith. Non è un personaggio eh, che, che, che può essere sostituito perché era un personaggio assolutamente unico. Il fatto che abbia sempre eh, pensato e avuto nel cuore due colori, il nero e l'azzurro. 
Well, guys, this week we're going to go way, way, way back. Uh, this is um, this is this is going to go back to the Grande Inter days. So none of us have been alive. So Will, you're not the only one that was uh, in <laughs> diapers uh, or, or not born when this player was uh, was playing. And in fact, uh, none of us here uh, actually saw this man play. Um, and I'm talking about Giacinto Facchetti, and he's um, he's interesting because he played 634 official games for this club. Uh, just an amazing. Uh, accomplishment. He he played basically virtually the entire 60s and 70s. Uh, his accomplishments as an individual, uh, as far as uh, trophies, he won two European Cups, aka Champions League today, uh, Coppa Italia, two Intercontinental Cups, and four Serie A titles uh, under Hedenio Herrera, and uh, the the architect of Grande Inter. And it's it's funny because he was brought in very early 1960-61. Will you were only three at that time? Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was brought in very early, and and uh, uh, Herrera uh, basically spotted him at his local club, and uh, very slowly brought him on. And at first, it was a, a, as a fullback or defender, but then he later evolved into the sweeper role in the uh, Catanaccio system that uh, Herrera deployed, uh, which basically ruled Serie A for the better part of the next decade. I mean, we're talking 1960 to 68 was Herrera's time, basically the entire decade there. Uh, dominated. Uh, it was it was a, a system that it took uh, Ajax Amsterdam to 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 really figure out and break down in the uh, European Cup final back in the 1967 season uh, when it was quoted that it, it was such a strong system that when Ajax won it was a victory for all of football just just <laughs> just, just 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 to break down Inter's uh, dominant system which had, which had been just torching everyone not just domestically but also internationally. This um, uh, Facchetti is also uh, should be uh, well known as uh, former chairman of the club. He replaced uh, Moratti in 2004. And uh, unfortunately for all of us, uh, we no longer get to enjoy his presence. He passed away from uh, pancreatic cancer far too early in 2006. And basically this guy, um, if you talk about really legends in the game, and we've talked about so far, you know, the Zlatans and the Lota Mateos, well, a lot of those guys were, were fantastic players, but what they didn't have was his longevity. You're talking about a guy who literally spent um, virtually almost every minute uh, of, of his football career uh, at Inter, and and that is to say uh, a lot. And and so I'd like, to, you know, if, for anybody that can share some stuff on, on this guy, um, go ahead and, 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 and please speak up now because I, I really do think that we're talking about when – Everyone looks back at that, you know, 100, 200 years from now, this man's name will still stand at the top of the list of players who made an impact on this club and who actually brought this club into uh, a, a kind of an international prominence. They were much more interwar in the mid 1960s than just a European club. They were they were they were they were a world club. So, Nima, I'm going to turn it over to you right now. And uh, what are your thoughts on Facchetti and, and even going into his post player uh, days? As, as chairman and also, you know, uh, in, in the front office of the club? For me, he, he, he really is Inter. Uh, he represents Inter, everything Inter is. He is the classic uh, Inter captain. He's the classic Inter bandiera. He, for me, I mean, there's one, one of these, like, urban legends that's kind of semi-been confirmed because after Luciano Moggi was at Napoli, uh, he was, uh, Massimo Moratti was close to bringing him to Inter. And uh, there's this um, there's this rumor that's kind of semi been confirmed where Facchetti told him that you can do whatever you want, you own the club, you can bring him in, uh, but if you do, I'm out. I'm not I'm not working with this guy. And uh, so Moratti didn't bring him in, and the rest is history, as we know. Uh, in, he's he's the epitome of honesty. I mean, he fair play. Uh, he was he was a, he was a complete gentleman and respected uh, by everyone. Uh, even though uh, Luciano Moggi uh, tried to completely tarnish his name uh, uh, by blaming Calciopoli on him and equating the despicable things and acts that he did with with what Facchetti did, uh, which is which was which has been investigated by police and deemed as not a crime. Um, so no, it's um, for me. For me, he is he is you know they don't make him like that anymore. You know, it's, he belongs to another era. It's it's all of that all of that like Grandinta, the Armando Picchis, the the gentlemen, you know, the gentle champions, you know, the statesmen uh, of, of of Italian football and Inter, uh, and he he was he was definitely that. Would you say Nima uh, and you know Alex uh, will please chime in? Uh, but would you say that when we talk about Picchi, when we talk about Facchetti, 
they those were those were the the extension when you say of Herrera's uh, mind on the pitch. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, he was. Uh, I mean, it was. It was. I think it's so interesting because the 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 grande inter of Herrera and the grande inter of Mourinho are so similar. Uh, I mean, you had Javier Zanetti, who is exactly the kind of character that Facchetti was uh, on the pitch, um, and uh, the, this kind of you know, and they almost played in the same position as well. Um, so, and Mourinho's his character is very similar to Herrera as well. So um, no, I, I would say I would say absolutely. I would say that these players, uh, you know, Facchetti, Picchi, Mazzola, they were definitely an extension of of Herrera's personality. The same way, Milito, Materazzi, um, Cambiasso, uh, Zanetti were of Mourinho uh, of the 2010 uh, team. And 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 Critty, uh, to to add to something, you touched on the longevity, which is a rare breed these days to have a player that spends virtually their entire career, even post player, with one club. And just, I think it's the definition of legend to know that decades beyond your passing, we're not at that point quite yet. But after Paquetti has passed away, and you know, decades after him playing, I, and you mentioned, I never got to watch him play in the 1960s, but to know that his name until the end of time will always mm-hmm. be associated with Inter, to be an Inter legend, potentially centuries beyond his passing. Mm. That, to me, is the definition of a legend, and it's a powerful thing. I'm sure Zanetti will also be there, but Fichetti yes. was there in that folklore first. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Abs- I agree. And many, and that's what many of those uh, Grande Inter, the, the first iteration, we can say, you know, we, we talked about uh, Mourinho's, but again, Mourinho's was so short-lived, and while it was uh, the, the treble-winning season and all this stuff, Inter were a, a, a powerhouse decades before Mourinho was even thought of as a manager. So, it, you know, and that was all due to Herrera, his vision, the Catenaccio, the, the, the style, the tactical uh, system that he deployed at Inter, how he got these players to execute it to absolute perfection over, you know, uh, the course of almost a decade. And it took it took a, a, a loaded Ajax Amsterdam team and, and just uh, some of, you know, obviously Cruyff and, and, and these guys that, that I mean, he, he himself is a legend to, to break this thing down. And uh, so it, I'll repeat it again. It, they, the, the, the way the media portrayed that was that, uh, you know, inter system was a slow, boring, <laughs> uh, uh, but, but, but deadly efficient. Uh, uh, they, they allowed the opponents to dominate possession and then just in the, in the right time, the fullback sprung up. The sweeper came up with them. Uh, the Fords marched uh, uh, into the penalty box. And then all of a sudden, uh, before you knew it, they, the, the counterattack was executed to absolute perfection. And you were down 1-0. And if you were down 1-0 in that system, that was the game. It was over. There was no scoring on that inter squad. If they were up 1-0, they, the, they had the point. I get Well, back then, two points. Uh, today would be three. So... It's just it was a victory for football, they said, because Inter's boring, uh, uh, just uh, uh, archaic, uh, uh, uninteresting system had had been broken down. But, you know, what, what's what's archaic or, or boring about it? If you're winning championships and you're winning silverware and you're winning uh, uh, European trophies, uh, I don't think that and any also, Inter supporter uh, at that time. And also, sorry, but to get 11 players to play function as a unit, there is an incredible beauty in that. I mean, I, I love the I love that. Uh, I've always been in love of that that kind of football. I mean, it's, it's about preference. I mean, beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. Personally, exactly. I think this tiki taka triangular ball passing left left right and center with 11 little little peep, tiny people passing the ball between themselves in 90 minutes in triangles is the most boring thing and frustrating thing i have ever watched but yep. i respect you know i understand that people find that more attractive personally i love the catanacho there is nothing more beautiful than winning one nil and scoring a goal and then shutting it down and frustrating the crap out of your 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 opponents i think it's gorgeous it's beautiful. yeah I'm, I'm sure there weren't very many inter supporters at the time they were arguing about you know the uh, the lack of entertainment <laughs> this way because they were filling up trophy cases. So yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's, uh, that's a, that's Inter, point. Inter fans were entertained. The rest of them, who cares? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to, uh, to to put him out there because he's such a uh, you know a, a, a focal point, not just of that era, but just of the club 
you know, since since the ni- early 1900s, since it was uh, founded, it's 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 been uh, it's had many great players, but none with the longevity and success of Facchetti. And that goes, as I said, into his post playing career as well, uh, being the chairman after Maratti. Uh, when we, and again, we lost him far too soon, but uh, that's who we that's who we will uh, remember today. And um, of course, uh, next week we'll we'll be talking about someone someone else in the uh, the Nerazzurri's history. Absolutely, that was a great. Uh, that was a great. Um, that was that's that's that was truly a great uh, episode, uh, part uh, segment there. I, I really love Facchetti. For me, is 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 kind of you know I never saw him play, but as a president, and the the fact that Moratti kind of stepped down and let him be the president, run the club, and he kind of lays down the the groundwork for, for what becomes Inter's second grande uh, Inter period. Is I mean, as, as Alex said, you know, centuries will go past, but he is the biggest. That the Inter have ever had, I think. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. You could not be more right. Great, Kirti. I know you got to run. Thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely, uh, guys. I'll see you. Speak. I'll talk to you all next week. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Uh, Nima, thank you. Alex, Will, same to you. See you Merry soon. Christmas. Right. Um, let's uh, let's move on to uh, what it might not be as nice of a of a <laughs> conversation, and that's because. The um, because of uh, Mauro Icardi's wife slash agent, uh, Wanda Nara Icardi was a guest late ch- late Monday night on her on the TV show known as Tiki Taka on Italian TV, um, where she where she was asked about what the holdup is uh, because the Gazeta dello Sport had gone on on Monday morning saying that the 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 renewal between the contract renewal was imminent. And she decided that she was going to speak her mind, and boy did she! Uh, she said that there was no, there, there is no renewal because Inter haven't even talked to her. Uh, she, they, they, she said she wanted to wait after uh, the, the the group stages of the Champions League, and then she proceeded to completely throw Inter's club hierarchy under the bus, saying that Mauro wants to stay. Mauro has never wanted to leave. Uh, it's Inter who tried to sell him to Juventus. They wanted to swap him for Higuain and money, but Mauro was the one who said no. And 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 on and on and on and on and on it went. Um, first of all, there clearly she this was something that he he knew she was going to do. This is something they they obviously have to plan together because it's certainly the fallout from this has been that. They've they've created quite the pressure on on the club because now half half of the Inter Inter fans are furious with with Mao with, with Inter saying how can you even think on um, on uh, you know about swapping Icardi for Higuain some some the people who already didn't like him at Inter are saying that he you know he's he's he, she she and him have no respect for the club they're trying to you know they think that they're bigger than the club and. As Will said, we're just going to play Kiev just before Christmas and then Napoli. So it is a complete, complete S show, crap show, um, which they created uh, for no reason. And I, I'm really keen to hear what your thoughts are on this, Alex, and where the heck do we go from here? Now, w- when I first uh, read these remarks, my first thought was, it was kind of an exercise I did with myself, wondering, would this be as bad or sound as bad if she wasn't also his wife in addition to being his agent? And I'll be honest with you. No, I, I, I don't think that that really makes it any worse because if it was any agent, Raiola or Mendez, I, I still think to say something like that, it sounds dreadful. I don't think it's even made any worse by the fact that Wanda is also his wife. I, don't, I think that's kind of irrelevant to this situation. You said something there that I've also been thinking about, Nima, and saying that, you know, she made these remarks really for no reason. I wonder about that. I wonder what the reason might have been. Uh, Now, she claims that there has been no offer, the talks aren't going on, but I I wonder if maybe in her mind and in in Morrow's mind, if there hasn't maybe been a lowball offer. You know, the rumors are he, he wants to make what or more than Higuain makes. He wants to be over the 7 million euro range. I wonder if they did maybe make an offer of, of $6 million that they found to be insulting, and, and this made uh, Wanda decide, I need to now go nuclear, that I need to now go scorched earth, really put the pressure on the club by airing some of their dirty laundry, 
It was something that they would not want out there. The idea that they were thinking of swapping, you know, my client for for Higuain. I know that's going to tear the fan base apart. Uh, I just wonder because uh, there has to be a reason. There has to be some reason why Wanda is starting to think the offer we want is not coming unless I really clamp down and put the pressure because I I have to think that uh, that that they feel like this is a necessary course of action, her and Morrow, to put something like that out there. I, I hope it's not for no reason, and I would love to know. Maybe someone's going to write a book about this years down the road. What's been going on so far in this negotiation to make Wanda feel like she has to tighten the screws like this? Well, well thing is, obviously there is a reason. They're not getting paid what they want to. They're frustrated, and, and, and that's that's all fair enough, but... There are way, 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 way better ways to handle this. Because the way I look at it is this. What she's done now is this is this is a declaration of war. And especially in a country in Italy, like Italy, this is nothing but a declaration of war. Because what they're doing now is they're 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 basically questioning the authority of the people in charge at the club. Now what that does is that puts the club in a situation where they either extend his contract, and if they just extend his contract and there's no other repercussions, then 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 it's it's not Inter Milan, it's FC Cardi, and when mm-hmm. you have when you have that situation, that is the the very definition of the recipe for disaster, because when 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 a player is bigger than the club, like Totti has been at Roma. I don't need to say anything more than that, do I? I mean, it just doesn't work, you know? It does not work. And Icardi doesn't have, you know, Totti is from Rome. Totti was, you know, that's, he can, you know, he has that to come back to. Icardi doesn't have any of that. It's, ba- I mean, her, 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 her rationale yesterday was, he, how much does Higuain make? How much does the goalkeeper from Milan make? Which I thought was kind of funny, not even mentioning Donnarumma's name. But that's a, that's, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a side show to all this. But anyway, when she does that, she's basically putting Inter's back against the wall. And yes, yeah, sure, I- Icardi has done loads for Inter. You know, he's been he's been the most most important player during Inter's most difficult period in modern times. But at the same time, Inter have also put a lot of faith in him. They made him captain. They you know, despite all the controversies, fighting with the Curva, all that, they stuck by him. And his way is is you know th- what he does now is basically go out there and say. You know, you're trying to kick me out of the club, and 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 you know, and I I was the one who wanted to stay. Now, whether that is true or not, what that does is that pushes the club hierarchy against their backs against the wall, and the choices are: does he stay or does he go? And I think that they, you know, even if they extend his contract, he's he's gone in the summer. I don't I don't see any other option other than that after what they've done now because I think that what broke here is is not you can't fix that what broke here. I really don't. I really don't think you can fix it. Will, what do you think? Well, I think you said something similar last year, to be honest. Um, well, and that he was going to go um and then he didn't. So, well, you know, <laughs> I I think there's a long way to go until the summer. A lot of things could well, happen. I mean, yeah, but I mean, this um, is different. This is different. I mean, that was the issue of if I thought Inter were going to sell him in the summer, and well, you know, this 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 is different. This is this is more. This is a completely different situation. Um, and well, if we are to go by what Wanda said, Inter were trying to get rid of him in the summer, apparently, because they wanted yeah. to play him with Cristiano well, Ronaldo. You know, so so it seems um, that Inter aren't happy. But after, I, I mean, the way I'm saying is after what happened here. When you take on the club hierarchy the way that they have taken them on, and that there's not, I mean, this is a very confrontational thing to do. Yeah, we should say that uh, both Azilio and Marotta have responded this evening. Um, they were yeah. interviewed outside the, the club's uh, dinner, just, just to complete the picture. Azilio said, um, Icardi will never go to Juventus. Uh, I'd rather, and he sort of laughed it off and said, you know, uh, I'd rather not talk about these things. Uh, for Christmas, um, Icardi, uh, uh, we made offer. We, we made Icardi an offer, and he decided that it wasn't uh, it wasn't suitable. But we want to keep negotiating. But we do that behind closed doors. Uh, Marotta said something very similar. He said, "You know, a bit of silence would be good for everyone. Um, you know, normally these things get sorted out maybe in January. We, you know, they they just so you know the the 
the club have officially denied that they ever tried to sell him to Juventus. You can take that and you, or you can leave it, but it's worth making it clear that they have both responded to that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Inter will... I, I don't know. I can't, I can't see him leaving. You know, I, I, just, I just think he's... He, I, I, think, I think it'll get done. That's just, that's just my hunch. Now, I understand that this is, this is a difficult situation, but it was also a very difficult situation two summers ago. When, which was when the, the, the club was changing hands and Wanda was on television every other night saying everything, saying fairly similar things. And in the end, they, it, it, they got it done. You know, I, I don't, I wouldn't, over, I wouldn't ever react to this, to be honest. I mean, it's not ideal because, as I said, we, we, we don't really need a distraction at the moment. We just need to make sure that we recover from this period of bad results. But Icardi loves Inter. I think, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's just a hunch. I don't know. Mm. I, I, I mean, personally, I don't see. Uh, what I'm wondering is how do they, how do they repair this relationship? Because you have a player and a, and his wife agent taking on the club's hierarchy, steady, steady head on like this. How do you move on from this? I I, I don't I don't see, and, and especially in Italy. I mean, this isn't you know in the Premier League it's different, but Italy Italy's a special country. You you cannot go out. Because it, it turns into an honor discussion, you know. It's like they're basically, you know, questioning Inter's honor here, almost. You know what I mean? By saying that, by comparing, saying that you wanted to get rid of him, he's the one who wanted to stay. I mean, she—it's not her her criticism, and what she said is not. It wasn't a little bit. It wasn't like she said it's you know Inter don't want to do this. I mean, she she really took them to town. It's a tough one for me, guys. Um, I, I put a lot of value in what Will said. Uh, maybe, maybe Nima, this is this is worse than any of these dramas we've seen before. Uh, but there have been plenty of times where uh, I have been almost convinced, oh, th- this is the summer, this is the window where he leaves, he's not back next year. And then all of a sudden, uh, a couple weeks later, everyone makes nice and they're all friends again between these parties. So I don't know. I think that, uh, like anything else, uh, if these talks are expected to really escalate and if a deal is going to be reached, it's probably going to be reached at some point in January. I, I think I really need to wait, digest, and let this simmer for another month before I overreact or underreact to it. Personally, I think they're gonna, they're definitely going to extend his contract. Absolutely. But I think that they, the fallback from this will come in six, seven, eight months' time in June. I mean, I, 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 especially the Chinese owners as well. This is this is not the kind of thing that Chinese companies and Chinese directors appreciate, you know. And and Stephen Zhang, he's a young president. I mean, Wanda's not stupid. I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, she's she's doing what she has, you know, whatever. But it's it's just that I just don't see how you can take on a club hierarchy, or at least based on how it's been before on, 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 on history, on, on, on the track record in Italy, when you take on a club's, you know, hierarchy like this, that is when you're out of there. You know what I mean? Like that's, that, that's, that is, that is, that, that you, you, there's no way to com- continue unless someone, you know, unless Auxilio is out. Marotta just came, so maybe he can save some face from that. I just don't see after after going going at inter as aggressively as she did how this relationship with the with the players that are there uh currently can can continue i really i really can't i mean beyond the summer i really really can't i i'd be very very surprised if 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 he stays after this um I don't know if, if if Inter turn around and win the Euro. I don't know. I I don't know. I I just feel that when I was reading this, I I couldn't believe what I was reading because, as I said, based on it, it, this is Italy. You know, you have to put it into the context and the country that it is. And in, in in Italy, when you when you go after, you know, this is this is you know the last time I can remember somebody really going on going against a, a club like this was Cassano during the Garotta at Sampdoria where where they sold him in the next two three weeks now I don't think that's going to happen but this is um you know me when Ibrahimovic said something much much less controversial about Milan he was sold three weeks later him and Thiago Silva were out of there you know so it's just you know I, I okay the Chinese owners might look at things a bit more in, in a different light but 
I I I I just thought it was wow, wow, and 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 it was it was also for me it was extremely unnecessary because. Okay, you want to put pressure on Inter, but this is this is almost a declaration of war. At least that's the way I see it. Um, and and I don't know. Do you, do you think there is a way to come back from this? Like, do you, I mean, you guys, I, I I'm I'm very skeptical, and and I and I just want to make it clear that I'm not taking sides and all of this. I you know, no one knows what's happening in 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 you know behind you know behind closed doors. Um, but. I just, you know, when she brings up Juventus and Higuain and, and they were trying to send him, you know, she makes Inter's hierarchy and club directors look like complete idiots when she says this. And, and <laughs> when you humiliate someone like this, Italians don't forget that, <laughs> you know, because this is a humiliation. That's what she, I, I don't know. And, 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 and at this time, after the Champions League as well, you know, after, after being knocked out of that and that still being a bit touchy, I don't know. Well, we'll have to see how the fallout is. But uh, my, 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 you know, my gut reaction is that he, they'll extend his contract. But you know, either she apologizes publicly, or, and maybe that's not even enough. Then, but in the summer, he's out. He's gone. Like this is. There were a lot of bridges that were burnt yesterday. Um, that's that's my that's my that's my gut feeling. I, I think it should probably be at least a couple weeks before Wanda sits down in a room with, with any director at Inter, right? I mean, you, you, you don't want to sit down in a boardroom tomorrow while, while heads are probably still hot. I, I think I think it's important to take a couple of weeks away and cool down. And then I, th- I think even more importantly than a public apology, because I'm not expecting that. I don't think Wanda has that type of personality where she would publicly apologize, but I don't know if I would put it past her to apologize privately and, and for the sides to sit down and cooler heads prevail. But I don't want any of them sitting down in a room for at least a couple of weeks because it's probably too tense right now. But the funny let's thing hope is they that, don't. Let's hope they don't cross paths at tonight's Christmas well, dinner because they're all there. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Let's hope right, they don't. Right, right. Let's say, right, let's sorted. Yeah, they're says, there. She says all of this ahead of. I mean, and she even she even acknowledges it by saying. Uh, that um, <laughs> I know that they'll probably kill me and throw plates at me tomorrow at the. It's but right. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just like so. This is she knows what she's doing here, and the day before the Christmas party, when you can you know kind of build some unity, she drops, she carpet bombs verbally, Inter pretty much like she drops a, I don't know, I don't know, and and I mean this hurts Inter. I think we can all agree on this at least that, it, that it, this hurts inter this is not what you want to be you, you don't want to have this 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 fight in in such a public setting i mean marotta marotta said i think it's best to have a little bit of con- confidentiality as Aus- auxilio said today uh we don't do we don't negotiate via tv shows <laughs> you know yeah. that, that's 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 a, that's a that's a swipe back at her as well um Right, let's move on to the part of the show where we pay tribute, risk the, rip the piss out of uh, someone or something in the world of football, starting with uh, this week's uh, Moji, uh, which will be presented by uh, Mr. Alex Donnell. Well, depending on your perspective, you may look at this as a Moji or a Morati, but let me explain Ooh. here. Yeah, because I, I thought, and of course, in Moji fashion, this does come from a Juventino. You, you may have heard the comments from Pavel Nedved, a uh, director at Juve now, about you know his former co-worker, his former boss, Beppe Marotta, saying it was weird watching him in the stands at an Inter game. Maybe he was never really a Juventino. Now, of course... When, when Interisti hear that, they may breathe a sigh of relief. Maybe he was never a Juventino. But I thought that that was a, a pretty classless, unnecessary thing to say about someone who was a mentor to you. And also, let's not forget that Beppe Marotta, I, I hate to say this, but if not for the fact that Juve cut ties with him, they essentially sacked him, removing him from the board of directors, he would probably still be there to this day. So to say something like that about this, guy when he didn't even leave that organization by choice I think it's putting him in an unfair position where a lot of Juventini a lot of fans are now ripping the piss out of that guy it really did spoke a stoke a lot of unnecessary flames so 
I, I thought to me it was a pretty classless thing to say from an organization that tends to produce pretty classless people. I didn't like it. Mm. I agree with you. And today there are reports coming that Juventus uh, had pretty much told Nedved to go out and attack Marotta like that. But it's Juve. What can you expect? Um, right. Uh, let's move on to a slightly more positive thing. This week's uh, Moratti, which will be presented by Mr. Will Beckman. He's, he works a lot. He's intelligent. And he surprises uh, people sometimes with his uh, ideas. Not easy to find one person of this uh, quality. Indeed. Yes, this week's Moratti is, um, I think, a, a necessary act uh, to counterbalance some of the, uh, the, the things that have been said on uh, social media and, and what like today. Um, I think this week's Moratti should be Jose Mourinho, ah, because nice. um, obviously we were recording this on Tuesday. Mourinho was, was sacked, we think, by Manchester United uh this week he had a terrible time there kind of um he fell out with everyone pretty similar to the way it ended at chelsea three years ago uh the media in england are kind of piling on him coming out with all their inside stories about how everyone hated him and so on and everyone's wondering where he'll go you've got pizza companies doing that really snarky uh, propaganda Christ. thing talking to the which, which happens routinely when anyone leaves now they say hey we've got a job available do you want to you know, send us your CV and all that kind of tripe. Um, so I just thought, you know, seeing as Mourinho, as far as interest concerned, means nothing but goodness, um, it's worth remembering that while he's not going through the best period of his career, and while perhaps he might not reach the heights that he reached maybe 10 or 15 years ago, he was, I mean, probably with Herrera, one of the most important managers in Inter's history because he captained them to a triumph that we may never see the like of again at this club. So I just thought it was nice to just sort of pay homage to him. I mean, um, we there is a whole debate that we could get into about whether or not uh, we would like to have him back. Um, I wouldn't, personally, but that doesn't mean that he he doesn't deserve to be uh, to be remembered Fondly, just I just thought it wasn't necessary to say that because you know he's one of the best managers the world has ever seen. But so it's just worth remembering it every so often. So let's move on uh, to a slightly more uh, comical uh, 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 segment of the show. This week's frog, which will be presented by myself. E clamoroso autogol di Ranocchia. Um, I absolutely love it when. People blame stupid things when they lose. Uh, one of my favorite things ever is uh, Walter Mazzari. <laughs> this is the right choice for this week's frog, I'm just saying. Um, we, we, I mean, one of my f- absolutely favorite moments ever is when Walter Mazzari is the coach of Regina and blames squad diarrhea for losing against Napoli. Um, the same guy blaming the rain when Inter lost the game. Uh, and or the cla- the now immortal words, and then it started to rain. <laughs> but I wonder if former Nerazzurri coach, uh, current <laughs> sporting director of AC Milan, Leonardo, didn't take that to another level after Milan lo- got l- lost against Olympiacos in the Europa League 3-1. I am quoting now. This is not something I am making up. This is an actual quote. If you go out of the Europa League for something uh, like uh, like that without in the days of the VAR, it becomes difficult to just accept a result. It's ridiculous that an instrument like VAR that everyone now uses cannot be used in a European tor- tournament. However, we also want to complain as there was a bizarre noise every time we went to attack. I don't know if it was a flute or a klaxon or what. <laughs> But it's not fair <laughs> to sound like that to distract every time we go forward. It was genuinely irritating. The referee should have stopped play and told them to cut it out. And after they scored, it actually got louder. As I said, this is a quote. I am not making this up. He is blaming in Milan getting knocked out of the Europa League in the simplest Europa League group out there on a flute and a klaxon. Um, which has prompted so many hilarious, hilarious, hilarious memes and tweets uh, online from people 
that have uh, that have. I mean, there's this one guy from this uh, this weekend. There were a bunch of people in the Kurva Noor taking pictures of playing the flute. Um, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I I I've, I never thought I could ever. I don't think anyone could ever beat Matsari when it comes to stupid excuses. But then then Leonardo came and talked about flutes and klaxons and. <laughs> Uh, well, what can I tell you? People under pressure are funny. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they did. I mean, they had a they had a case up to a point. You know, the penalty that they went out on was ridiculous. But he should have just stopped there. Like, right. don't go on to talk about a flute and a car and a something and else and this and that and the wind was blowing in the wrong direction. Just leave it all. You're 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 at Milan. Just just be serious. And in fact, good too as I was, wasn't it? Came out and just said, "Yeah, we were crap. It was our fault." And so he looks even worse after that. <laughs> the flute. I mean, <laughs> I can yeah. That's not going to leave him now. <laughs> the flute. Not He's going to be getting sent flutes for Christmas. <laughs> for ten years. I mean, the, we, I, I don't know what to tell you. The flute. The flute. Yes, the flute. That, that is, I mean, diarrhea is a serious problem. But the flute? I mean... <laughs> yeah, so, so thank you for that. Because uh, I thought after last week's uh, frog... When when you when you when you highlighted the fact that Fulvio was talking about this, this uh, there is a team called FC Frog Milano that we Frog can, Milano. We would never. Wait, 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 we, we still we still need to get that as a sponsor oh, for the segment. I I I, I want I, I told I I texted Fulvio saying I want him to get me a top belonging to that that club. I I I, I am next time I'm going to Milan. I'm buying a Frog Milano shirt. It, it's just. Could we, do a, could we do a pod live from, uh, from a match? <laughs> yes. Go to one of those yeah. games. Frog Milan, absolutely. A group trip. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. We, we got to. And we ha- I, have to, I still have to know why they're called Frog. I, I mean, we, we have to research this. Right. Um, I want to thank you guys. Uh, I want to thank you, Alex, for coming on. Thank you. I had a great time, as always. And you will. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry don't Christmas. let Kiel get you down. <laughs> no, don't let Kiel get you down. Merry Christmas, everyone. We'll be back uh, after Christmas. Uh, probably it's, it's, it'll be difficult to do it before the Napoli game. We'll try to fit one in before the Napoli game. Uh, but we'll definitely be back after New Year's to do a, after the, to do a mid-season special uh, where we will be going through uh, the first half of the season, and uh, you know, uh, we'll ho- hopefully have a really special guest on as well. Um, but until then, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, uh, and as always, my name is Nima Tawali Rutsari, wishing you six points, uh, nine points actually, nine points. Uh, Merry Pipe Christmas. Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nobody even I, talked about the Empoli game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, d- don't ruin Christmas for everyone, all right? Um, right. As always, I'm your host, Nima We sing you nine points, Will Beckman. Uh, Merry Christmas. Yakini Happy- is the Empoli manager. <laughs> nine <laughs> points. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. And sempre e solo Forza Inter. Forza Inter, Inter.